TPS can do so many amazing things, but without employees using it, not a whole lot would get done. So let's go over what you see on the employee screen. You start out with the three dots over here that allows you to edit employee properties or delete an employee, which we'll talk more about in just a second. Then we have our user. This has the initials of the employee if there's a user license assigned to that employee. If not, you'll see this red icon. Then you have the employee name and the color assigned to them. Each employee has a color assigned to them, so when you're using the workflow employee calendar here, if you're a manager and have this permission enabled, you're able to use the filter to see more than one employee's calendar, which is what you're seeing here. So I can differentiate between my employees based on the color assigned to them. There's more about that on the workflow employee calendar video. Next, we have the employee ID, which is often used to sort for information. So maybe on reports, instead of putting the full name, you can search by employee ID. Then we have their type. This is assigned to each employee. So are they an accountant, a partner, a manager, other, etc.? Has license. This means a license to use TPS. If it says no, it means they probably no longer work in your firm or they're just not someone who uses the system. You might think you want to go and delete the ones that say no, but be careful with that because sometimes it's better to just leave them there because even if they're not an active user, their name may be attached to reports or time entries and things like that, and you don't want to do anything that would affect your reports. So just be careful with that. Up here where it says status, right now I'm showing all, but you might want to show just your active employees or just your inactive. And then of course we have a search bar. You may have a long list of 50 employees, maybe 100, and you want to search for a specific employee. Rather than scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, you could search for them by name. And once you've run that search, you can clear it by clicking this button here. Over here on the right, we have the split screen button. So this allows you to open up the employee properties for whatever employee you've clicked on and have it open side by side with the list over here. Then if you wanted to close that, you just click it again and just opens up the employee properties the way it usually looks. I'm gonna close out of that completely. The plus sign is how you would add an employee. You start out with the general tab and as you can see, there's a video here that explains all about the general tab. But once you fill out this info and click save, the employee will show up over here. Then at that point, you would click the three dots, come into edit, and edit their employee information in there, all their employee properties. They also won't have an active license to use TPS until the manager goes into the admin center and makes this employee an active user by activating their license. So they'll need to log into the admin center at admincenter.tpssoftware.com or if they're logged into TPS like we are now, they can come up here to where this little bubble is with the initials and choose Manage Subscription. Here inside the Admin Center, you can see there's a video that shows you everything about it, but you'll see a list of your employees here. You can see that some say active, some say inactive. If you don't see all of your employees, you can click here where it says Synchronize Employees, and that should synchronize with the list that you have inside of TPS if you've added them there already. If the employee is on the list and is showing as inactive, like this one here, you can click to activate their license. If they're still not showing on the list after you've synchronized, you can use this button to add a new employee and activate their license. Next, we have our refresh screen. Then we have our filter, which would allow you to view deleted employees. And we have our settings, like you see on most TPS screens, where you can print what you see back here in an Excel spreadsheet format. You can change how many items you see per page. Right now we have 10 employees showing, but you might want 20, 30, and so on. And you can change the columns. So right now we're showing all of these columns. If you wanted to get rid of some of them, you just uncheck them and then come back here and check them again if you want to bring them back onto the screen. Again, over here we have the delete button. Just be careful with it, as I mentioned before. But let's go ahead and look at the employee property screen. You'll notice that each of these tabs has a video that explains exactly how to fill out that tab and what the information on that tab does for you. So we start out on the general tab. This is also where you assign the employee their color. Then we have their personal information, their address, phone number, and email information. The rates tab is where you'd put in their standard rate and overhead rate, and it's where you'd establish their rate levels and special rates. 
permissions. So what exactly they're able to do in this system. Make sure you watch all these videos in here because the employee rights or permissions are very important. Courses is where you can keep track of the courses an employee has taken or certifications they've received. Notes that you'd like to keep on this employee. Target information. Preferences and audit log. And again, remember, they all have a video explaining each one of these. And that pretty much covers it for the main employee screen overview. Thank you for watching.